All right. I'm going to do share screen here. I'll wait to see if some people tune in. Give it a few minutes here. We've taken just a couple minutes to um, answer a guy here in the comments. I said I was going to, so I'm finally getting around to it. Hello to both of you already that are in the comments there. I see there's about 15 people up. I will definitely pray for you on that. Um, hmm, that's a shame. Sorry about hearing about that. <clears throat> yeah, hi again. I'm back. <laughs> so I'll just give it another couple of seconds here or whatever, maybe another minute. So I'll zoom on this a little bit. Oh, not way too much there. We go. Ah, come on here. Okay, everybody can see that now. <clears throat> I guess I'll give it to about three minutes and then I'll get started on this. Hopefully everybody's doing well. All right, I guess I'm going to get started here real quick. Um, there was a comment that I saw from somebody, uh, Caleb Wilson or something, and I thought, I think it's him. So I made it um, some kind of deal about, I said in one of my studies about the 1689 London Baptist Confession, he um, said that this comment, I forget which video it was on, said something about that, you know, the, do I hold, something about the London Baptist Convention, um, or con confession, not convention. And he writes here, and I, I named him in one of my studies, and I said, and uh, it says, I had a brother inform me that you used my name. Since you did, would you be willing to have a conversation over the subject? You can film it for your channel. Now, um, I'm not afraid to talk to anybody. Just don't want to get that out there. But what I've seen so many times over the years and dealing with people face to face, uh, going to church buildings for many years, you get into a conversation, and oftentimes it'll get sidetracked and whatever. And this subject is very important, and that's why I said I'm just going to answer in video. Okay, that way we stick to the scriptures. What would be the point of the conversation? Is it going to be just a useless debate? In other words, would you be defending the 1689 London Baptist Confession? And then he says, why can't I see my reply? Did you block uh, me or set my comments for needing approval? Or is it just a YouTube glitch? YouTube constantly messes with my comment section. I didn't block you, which was the truth there. And he says about YouTube is full of communists, whatever there. Um, <clears throat> and then he says here, okay, good day to you. I had a few questions. I can zoom in just a little bit more here. Um, so it's bigger on the screen. I had a few questions that I thought you might answer for me. Number one, are all three parts, 
to borrow the language that you used in this video of God personal. Well, okay, first of all, problem number one, it's not the language that I used in the video. It's what the Bible teaches. Here is the sermon that I did on that, showing that scripture for members and parts of the Godhead. It is what the Bible says. It's not my opinion. Okay? I am a Bible-believing preacher. This is the book that I give to people. I don't give them a book like this and then a book of confession. You know, the London Baptist Confession. Um, and then also the writings of the church fathers and, you know, the catechism and I only give this book to people, and I've given lots of these Bibles out over the years, both in person and shipped them to other countries, everything. I don't say, well, you need um, you need the Bible and these other things. So parts is what the Bible says. It's not up to me. Okay? But, it, you know, are all three parts of God personal? Little stuff that gets played here, I'll show you what I mean. Example, when the Father speaks to the Son, is he speaking to himself, or is he actually engaging with the Son, Jesus Christ? Um, it's soul speaking to body, is what it's speaking there. Oh, that's what the Bible says, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. All right, uh, there's a difference between the flesh and the spirit and the soul. I proved that in other studies. Or when the Bible says the, that the Holy Ghost spoke, was this hymns personally speaking all right um again the holy spirit can speak the spirit and the soul and the body can be different there it's, it's not any kind of a thing of that they have to be separate persons again if you answer the full according to his folly you say okay then you trinitarians you believe that there are three separate persons what is the constitution the makeup of each of those three separate persons and they get all confused. I've never had one actually, you know, say this is the, you know, the way it is here. Whatever. It's just, well, you know, I, the whole the Holy Spirit's a spirit, I think, and the and God the Father's a spirit, and Jesus has His own spirit. And it, okay, give me some scriptures that prove that. Give me scriptures for more than one spirit in the Godhead. There aren't any. So it, it gets really weird after a while, but. Um, I'm trying to understand how far apart we are from each other and whether or not there is something in my understanding that can be increased by your position. One of your ardent defenders agreed with me that each of the members of the Godhead has distinct personality and they are all co-equal and co-eternal. Well, I don't really care what my ardent defenders say. Um, what does the Bible say? Where does the Bible say that they're all co-equal, that they're all co-eternal? I mean, if I'm in a foreign country someplace and somebody comes up and I get to witness to them and I say, would you like to be saved? And they say, yes. And I say, OK, I, I, my plane's leaving. I have to get out of here. All I can do is give you my Bible. Would they be able to come up with co-equal and co-eternal with just a King James Bible? No. Would they come up with three persons with just a King James Bible? No. You have to go outside of the scriptures. And I've talked to people personally that they, I try to start explaining the Godhead doctrine and they say, well, that makes sense. I've always believed that Jesus is God. I just didn't understand this Trinity thing. It just didn't make any sense to me. But you explain the Godhead doctrine to somebody that hasn't had their mind warped by a college education, Bible college education. They understand the Godhead doctrine. It's not that difficult. God doesn't have to be some kind of a mysterious unattainable you know i mean the mystery of godliness is great i get that but what i'm saying is this thing that we can only reach through philosophy philosophical understanding that's the problem here and that you're going to see in these comments there's a lot of added words that do not appear in the bible and that's the problem um if that is true of you then would then we would be in agreement on the basic nature of jehovah god that each part I would say person because the distinctions that make a difference are distinctions in persons slash personality and not nature. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy. That's what this is. The Catholic Church, It's it blows my mind. The Catholic Church, as evil as it is, they're honest about the fact that they add things to the scriptures, that the Trinity is of philosophical origin. They do not lie and say well, no it's it's backed up by scripture and and whatever and i've met baptists 
that add things to the scriptures. They add all kinds of stuff to the scriptures. And then they say, we're Bible believers in all matters of faith and practice. The Catholics say, we're no, we're not Bible believers. We add things. We have divine tradition to go along with sacred scripture. Well, at least, at least the Catholics are honest, you know. But right here we have page 74, number 251. In order to articulate the dogma of the Trinity, the church had to develop its own terminology with the help of certain notions of philosophical origin. And then the next page, it gets into the thing of essence. Right there, Catholic Catechism. I've showed this in many studies. Let's see if I can show it here close up. You can't probably can't see that, but you can see it says philosophical origin right there. In the Catechism, you know, well, thank you for being honest there, Catholics. It's a shame that the Baptists can't be so honest. Um, so, you know, and again, see the philosophical thing here. If they have different personality, then that would mean that they have different persons, or that they're different persons. No. Of the Godhead, I would say Godhead or Trinity. And if we agree that you only disagree with my use of Trinity because you don't know the traditional definition. I know the traditional definition. That's not the issue here. It's not in the Bible. That's the whole thing. And if you actually understand what the Trinity teaching is, it's completely false. Philosophical nonsense. I will add a couple definitions for clarity of my position at the end of this comment. You, in, you interpret that to mean that Jesus as the word is the body. I agree that he took on the likeness of sinful flesh but would not agree that he had an eternal body due to no contextual scriptures that affirm that as a definite truth. Eh, wrong. Um, okay, right here, that's why I did that. I did not have anything covering this thing of eternal body. Did Jesus have an eternal body? Okay, obviously he's in the Old Testament. Right? You see him, the Son of God, being mentioned in the Old Testament. Um, Nebuchadnezzar sees him in the by reference. With Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You see the angel of the Lord appearing different times. I talked about that in the study. I proved it. Um, he had a body in the Old Testament. He's there in eternity when he's making the earth, and he says, let us make man in our image. If he's just a spirit, a disembodied spirit, then what was he talking about? Of course, Jesus had a physical body. So to say that there's no clear scriptures for that, um, that's a problem. Um, definitely a problem. Uh, Father as the soul, the Holy Ghost as the spirit If the distinctions I have made disagree with your understanding Then where do you fall? Um, would you be part of A part of the camp that says that there is only one person of God um, Who manifests himself dis distinctly Without the allowance of three different persons' personalities Well, see again, there's a there's lean towards a Trinitarian Anybody that disagrees is a modalist A modalist, anybody that disagrees is a Trinitarian <laughs> I'm not either one Please understand that so um, I'm not part of the, you know, that, that there's one person of God and he manifests himself differently. No, he doesn't need to manifest himself differently in the sense of he appears as the sun and then, you know, and then he's God in eternity, God on the earth. And No, I don't say that. It's just very simple. Body, soul, spirit. That's why there's three and they're one. There are three distinct parts of one being, of one person. That's what the Bible teaches. Again, go back to my earlier analogy of I get off the air or I'm getting on an airplane and I hand somebody in a foreign country a King James Bible and say, there you go. They aren't going to find persons. They aren't going to find divine essence or all this other stuff or Trinity. Okay. Edit. Added definitions of my position. The Christian doctrine of the Trinity Latin Trinitas, the triad from Latin Trinus threefold, defines God as one being, um, as being one God existing in three co equal, co eternal, co consubstantial of the same substance, essence, nature. It's from philosophy. You have to understand that. Divine persons God the Father, God the Son, no scripture, Jesus Christ, and God the Holy Spirit. There's no scripture for God the Son or God the Holy Spirit. Again, you're creating confusion. You're creating lies based on philosophical, you know, origins is the whole thing. You can't do that. You're going outside of the scriptures. The Bible say says about not adding to the scriptures. I mean, am I supposed to offer people that I meet? What do I offer them? 
I'm a Bible believer. Here's a King James Bible. It's all you need. Oh, no, and actually, no, you need certain books that can explain the scriptures. Then I'm a Catholic. I'm no better than a Catholic. Okay. Um, three distinct persons sharing one homoousian with their essence. It's from philosophy. There's no scripture for that. In this context, the three persons define who God is, while the one essence define, defines what God is. Did you learn that from a cemetery? I mean, excuse me, a seminary? Um, you didn't learn that from the Bible, unless you learned it from some guy that was preaching from a Bible who learned it from a seminary. So, uh, yeah, problem. I uh, went and messed up that, didn't I? Okay, the doctrine of the Trinity holds that God is one essence nature, but three persons. God has one nature, but three centers of consciousness. Philosophical stuff. God is only one what, but three who's. Some unbelievers mistakenly call this a contradiction. Rather, the doctrine of the Trinity is a mystery revealed by God in his word. The Trinity is a mystery revealed by God in his word. Well, I have to rebuke you on that one. You're in sin. You just lied right there. And by the way, capital W is a reference to the manifest word of God to Jesus Christ. Again, you go with the scripture as this final authority. Lowercase w is how the written word is always written. Never once is it a capital W. Seven references to the capital W manifest word. Be careful what you're writing there. Again. Okay, but uh, the Trinity is a mystery revealed by God in his word. You're a liar. Caleb Wilson, you are a liar. We have no fellowship. That's what I'm saying. And see, if I would have called you that to your face in a conversation, in a video, you show up here or something like that, and whatever, if I meet somebody like that and I say, you're a liar, then it's going to be all about my attitude and why would I say that and their whole thing. I'm dealing with facts here. The Trinity is not revealed in the Bible. It's not. It's just that simple. All of the terms that I use, Godhead, parts, they're all in Scripture. A contradiction would be to claim that God has only one nature, but also three natures, or that he is only one person, but also three persons. God is only one person. There's no persons. Again, I've showed that in my book. I go through every reference to persons, plural. Not once is it a reference to God. Never once. New Testament writers mention all three persons of the Trinity together numerous times. No, they don't. Example given, Romans chapter 1, verse 4. All three persons of the Trinity, he says. Okay, let's go, let's go through these scriptures quick. And declared to be the Son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. Um, persons? No. Uh, 15, verse 30. Romans 15, verse 30. Let's go there. I'll just show you. I can prove everything I'm saying with scripture. Romans 15, verse 30. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the, or, or excuse me. Now I beseech you, brethren, for the Lord Jesus Christ's sake and for the love of the Spirit that ye strive together with me in your prayers to God for me. I didn't see the word persons there or Trinity. It's not there. Well, it's there. It's just not a body. No, it's not. No, it's not. Body, soul, spirit. It's simple. I don't know how these people don't get this. 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 14. 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 14. And the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all. Amen. Three parts of one person, one God, one being. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 13 through 14. I already know persons aren't in any of these verses, but I'm just doing this for sake of argument. In whom ye also asked, in whom ye also trusted after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance unto the redemption of the purchased possession, under the praise of his glory. I don't know how you get three persons out of that. Um doesn't work. First Thessalonians chapter one, verses three through six. Uh, was it chapter 1, did he say? Yeah. Chapter 1, verses 3 through 6. 
remembering without ceasing your work of faith and labor of love and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ in the sight of God and our Father. It's kind of interesting there, you know, knowing, brethren, beloved, your election of God. For our gospel came not only unto you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Ghost and in much assurance, as you know what manner of men we were among you for your sake. And ye became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Ghost. Three persons. I didn't see three persons. You say, well, they're, they're all the three separate persons are mentioned there. Uh, or it could be three parts of one God. Okay. If we go to a, a court setting or something, and I'm on trial, and you say, Judge, this heretic right here says that there are no three persons in the Bible, and I can prove it to you. I'm going to show you three persons, distinct persons in the scriptures. And I'm going to say, okay, if you can show the word persons, then I'm guilty, and you can take me out and hang me or burn me at the stake or whatever else. I'm getting, if it's a just judge, which Lord only knows, there probably aren't very many of those left in America. But the whole point is, the word persons is not anywhere in there. That's revealed in his word. The Trinity is in his word. No, it's not. No, it's not. You need to stop lying. The early believers knew that the Father and the Son sent the third person of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit, another counselor, to live in our hearts. John 14 there, 16 and everything else. But we'll go there quickly. Let me show you something here. The early believers. See, now we're getting into the Catholic thing of the early believers, the early church, the church fathers and whatever else you're adding to the scriptures again and i will pray the father and he shall give another comfort you another comforter that he may abide with you forever even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not neither knoweth him but ye know him for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you i will not leave you comfortless i will come to you uh i think those words are in red Who's he talking about there? Is he talking about Jesus, God the Son coming, or is he talking about the Holy Spirit, you know, God the Holy Spirit? Who's he talking about? How can he say, I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit there, the Holy Ghost, the Comforter, the Spirit of Truth. I'm going to have the Father send him to you. I will come to you. Because he's one being. He can speak as Holy Spirit, as Father or as Son. It's not manifesting himself. It's just, it's one being. It's one person. The spirit can speak. The body can speak. The soul can speak. And I can prove it all from scripture. That's the thing. It's I don't need to go to traditions. Uh, verse 26. Also there. Go down to verse 26. But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Okay, again, Trinitarians out there. God the Father is going to send God the Holy Spirit. I do that in quotations there because it's not a Bible term. All right, what is the makeup of God the Holy Spirit? A disembodied spirit? He has no body? Or is he a bird? You know, um, which the Catholics depict. I'm not trying to be insulting on purpose here you know um what is he the holy spirit what is he you know uh, uh god the father is he a spirit as well i mean more than one spirit I, it's just craziness and then i think it's what 16 verse 7 chapter 16 verse 7 just going to cover all the scriptures that he puts up here just so he can say it didn't cover that scripture. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. Wait a second. I thought he said the father was going to send the Holy Spirit. Why would Jesus then turn around and say, I will send him unto you? Isn't that kind of confusing if you believe in three separate persons? Or maybe it's just one person, one God, and he can speak and say, I will send him to you as the Father. Or I will come to you as the Holy Spirit. It's beautiful. It's wonderful. When you read it and you say, I believe what the Bible teaches. God was walking around on the earth 
In him, in Christ, dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. He's not some, you know, oh, I, I'm a prophet of God, you know, holy Muhammad, prophet of God and whatever. Jesus is another prophet. No, he's not. He's God. Oh, Jesus was just a fake Messiah. No, he's not. He's God. Holy, completely God. There aren't any two persons up in heaven or something or a person and a bird flying around. All right. My God is Jesus Christ. So these mysteries were accepted fully by the early church as revealed truth, yet without the label of the Holy Trinity. Okay, proof, proof. Where's the proof? Well, that's right, the church fathers that you study when you go off to seminary someplace. And we can see that we have the apostolic succession and whatever else. Um, yeah. So I said, uh, good questions. Do you mind if I answer your comment in the video? Meaning the ones where the thing about the Jesus have an eternal body. Is there a separate will between the father and the son? Already proved it from the scriptures in the ones I just did not long ago. The sermons there. I would appreciate it. He says here at the risk of coaxing you into an egregiously long video or series of videos. I've added a few additional comments below as, as well as an edit to the original comment for clarity. If you're able to address them all in one, I would be very glad. I think the defense of your position rests heavily on the use of God's description of man as a tripart being and lacks grounding in all of the passages of three distinct persons described as the one true God. God uses analogy and simile a lot. Um, I'm not quite sure exactly what you mean by that. God's description of man as a tripart and lacks grounding in all of the passages of three distinct distinct persons. Uh, well, I don't have any problem with the thing of, you know, uh, having to prove that there are no three persons because the Bible never says that. So, for instance, he commands you and I as husbands to love our wives like Christ loved the church. We don't understand that to mean that we should die as an, as an atonement literally for our wives, but that we should live sacrificially for our brides. There's some deep theology and practical teaching in that analogy. Likewise, when he describes the makeup of man, do you think that he would be able to define himself, the infinite almighty Jehovah God, as the likeness of man, as an exact copy of what his nature is? Let us make man in our image. Yes, that is exactly what he said. Again, do you serve a God that is more than just a body, soul, spirit? There's my question. Write it in the comments of this video if you see this. Body, soul, spirit. Is your God more than that? All the stuff here, the all, infinite, almighty Jehovah God. Okay. What is his makeup? Please explain it and give the scriptures to back it up. If that's true, then there would have been no need for him to make himself a servant and take on the likeness of men. Um, yes, it would. <laughs> he took on the likeness of sinful flesh so he could feel pain. That's what he was taking on. He wasn't feeling pain in the Old Testament. He had an immortal body in the Old Testament, a body that could not die in the Old Testament. That's what it meant to take on the likeness of sinful flesh. It had nothing to do at all with the thing of, you know, he's he didn't have a body and he kind of became a body. Then, then who was it in the Old Testament? Who was Melchizedek in the Old Testament? I better stop now. I love Jehovah. I love what he has revealed about himself in time and look forward to what he will later reveal in eternity what did he re reveal about himself in time did he reveal himself through uh philosophies of men or through his word because if you say well both actually okay then we're not on the same page and there's no point in having a conversation with you in fact i my only conversation with somebody like that a hardcore trinitarian is um you need to get saved because if you believe in this line of reasoning over here then you're not saved. You're lost. You don't understand who Jesus Christ really is. Okay, and you're adding to the scriptures, which God condemns. Um, okay, and then he writes a number of weeks ago here. It's been some time since our comments back and forth, and I'm sure that you are busy, which is why you have not posted your response video yet. One thing I would like to add, if it's not already in my comments above, is a request to give a citation of me stating that I am here to I think to defend maybe the London Baptist Confession, I'm not very familiar with that confession of faith, and hence I would not think it was reasonable that I'm, that I would, 
treated in the manner that you just mockingly characterized things. Um, again, I don't remember where the comment was. It was uh, Caleb Wilson or something like this. I'd have to look through my other comments. I have so many comments. If you didn't say the London Baptist Confession thing, okay, then I apologize. If it was somebody else, then okay, you're not connected to that. Sorry about that. But uh, you are a Trinitarian, and you are defending the use of added words to the King James Bible. So um, how do we preach? How do we teach? Can I offer this as a standard to somebody and feel safe walking away and say the Holy Spirit will guide them into all truth? Or do I have to say, oh, no, I should send one of my official trained priests over there to make sure that he doesn't get messed up because the Holy Spirit's not enough. Oh, I, I should probably send him a copy of our confession of faith. I should probably send him a copy of the catechism and the you know, doctrines and, and um, book of discipline and you know, the church fathers and, the, you know, the uh, really? Uh, no, actually, I believe in the Holy Spirit inspired scriptures. So, and um, just to clarify again, another little jab that was woven throughout the comments there. Um, and that is, you know, your beliefs, one of your defenders. Okay. I did come up, I did not come up with the Godhead doctrine, right? Um, the body of Christ, it was revealed to the body of Christ. A lot of Christians have always believed this. Um, I learned it. I was taught it. Um, Peter Ruckman taught the Godhead doctrine very clearly and then messed it up by combining Trinitarian philosophy with it and trying to make the two blend. And you can't. You just can't. Um, so he was the first one I ever heard of that said that, you know, the body, soul, spirit. These three are one. He that hath seen me hath seen the Father, Jesus speaking to Philip. It's simple. You figure it out and you say, well, how do I make it? Line up with Trinitarian stuff? You can't. It's just that simple. I mean, what, I don't know what else to say about the whole thing. Um, but you know, way back when this this whole thing was getting really heated up, um, people were writing in the comments and they were saying, "Hey, brother, look at this verse. Look at that verse. This would also prove that Jesus and the Father are one and the same person, and the Holy Ghost." I, I never even thought about that. Yeah, that's a good point. The body of Christ, it was revealed to the body of Christ. So, um, again, I don't I don't understand. You know, oh, Brian Denlinger, he's the one that created this thing or something else. See, again, it's, it's classic Roman Catholicism. Oh, we reject the errors of Sibelianism and uh, the Paulicians and the Donatists and the Waldensians and the Lutherans. And the, you, you have to make it about a man. Because then it's, oh, it's not revealed from Scripture. It's not revealed through Christ's church. So, um, you know, it, it's Denlinger's Godhead doctrine or something like this. So <laughs> um, that's all I'm going to be say, saying about that. Um, I might do some interviews in the future. I've thought about that different times. You know, I know the one time I opened up a live stream and, and people were in the live stream you know, anybody could join and, and I was talking to different people and that was fun. Um, and uh, so, I don't know. I've thought about that. I don't want it to get into some carnal, you know, name calling thing and whatever else. It's not, you know, edifying. So, um, but anyhow, I'll answer a few comments here quick. I see this one here. Uh, I ran. Naughty, naughty, you misspelled my name. You're in big trouble now, heretic. <laughs> I'm joking. Um, Robert Breaker says it's three parts and three persons. He claims a few verses proves three persons. Uh, <laughs> Breaker is, uh, he takes Ruckman and, you know, he, he's a Ruckman regurgitator. Okay. I know a lot of guys like that. They study Ruckman's commentaries, which I have up here in Ruckman's books, and that, oh, the holy Ruckman, oh, you know, and everything else. I thank the Lord for Dr. Ruckman. I, I love the man. Um, you have to meet him face to face. You know, I, I shook his hand, said thank you. You know, he kept me from getting messed up. So that's why I'm thankful for Ruckman. But he wasn't perfect. I mean, 
he was messed up in a bunch of areas. But these guys that when they regurgitate Ruckman, they say, well, it has to be Trinity and Godhead mixed together. It doesn't work. And what Breaker does when he proves the three persons, he'll go and he'll say, and he does a little duping delay thing. He, he, over here, he, he, it says this thing here, and it's a person. It says person about the Holy Spirit or person about the Father. So that's two different persons. Huh? No, it doesn't say persons. And you can say two body, soul, spirit, and say person in each reference. It doesn't make three persons. It's one person being described. The three parts of one person being described. Not that hard. Um, so, why do people call God Abba or Abba? It really baffles me. Um, talks about the the one verse in uh, Galatians, I think it is. You know about we receive a spirit of adoption whereby we cry Abba Father. Okay, so it's. Just saying that he's our father now. Um, do you think that do you think the Antichrist could be a non-living person? No, I don't. Brian, have you ever read the original 1611 old grammar? Yes, I have a 1611 photographic copy. I have a 1611 reproduction. I have a bunch of it. The old uh, Gothic font and the way that they used to spell some of the words was slightly different than what we have today. Um, so, does anybody else have any other questions? Quick, if not, I'm going to get going here. It is really hot in this room right now. <laughs> uh. I look forward to winter. What do you think about how the CDC changed their view about the coronavirus? Um, I haven't actually heard anything about that. Are you acquiring any livestock, Brian? No, we're not. Um, we know farmers that that uh, raise, you know, different livestock and things, and they do a much better job than I can do. So we support them. When Jesus died, who went to hell? The soul. I will need not leave my soul in hell. Neither will thou suffer thine holy one to seek uh, corruption. Did a video on that. Um, okay. Uh, have you noticed if Chick tracks teach the Trinity? Yes, they do. Unfortunately. Chick Publications is very strong Trinitarian. Um, different brethren have tried to say something to them about that, and they don't. They're just uh, they don't listen. Um, okay, let me see. Here was the Zechariah three two. Is that the body talking to the soul? Let me check that quick. The minor prophets are not one of my strong uh, things. Um, and the Lord said unto Satan, The Lord rebuke thee, O Satan, even the Lord that hath chosen Jerusalem rebuke thee. Is this is not this a brand plucked out of the fire? Um, yeah. Um, definitely. Um, body talking to the soul. Yes, I would say so. Yeah. Otherwise, you have two lords. Again, you have, always have to think of the opposite. Okay, hmm, no, that couldn't be. Okay, then what would be the other option? You'd have to have two lords, two gods. That's a problem. So yeah, it would, of course, have to be the Lord saying, you know, about another part of the Godhead, 
the Lord rebuke you or rebuke thee. Did you end up deciding on whether to invest in platinum? Um, yes. I have invested. I don't have a whole lot to invest into it, but I do believe in the precious metals things. Um, you know, there's a whole thing in James about, you know, uh, heaping together gold and silver. Doesn't say anything about platinum. That's a joke. Um, but, you know, the I'm going to be coming out with a different, uh, some different thoughts on that. Um, certainly when you get way into the time of Jacob's trouble, I mean, the book of James is written to the Jews that go into the time of Jacob's trouble. You get into that time period, yeah, gold and silver will be worthless. But coming up to that, um, there's some thoughts there about, you know, some good times to invest in it and whatever else. And I think a good way to fight the central bank digital currency is with precious metals, which is another issue. Uh, what are your thoughts on Charles Spurgeon? Mixed emotions. I'm just, I, some guys just worship him, whatever. I don't really care one way or the other, honestly, about him. Um, I, somebody actually sent me a picture of him with his hand inside his coat, like a Freemason would do. Any thoughts on this upcoming winter? I've been hearing a lot about it being a very brutal winter. I know over in Poland right now, they, there's long lines of people waiting to get cold and, and everything. Um, so, yep, missed. Moved just as I was clicking on it. Question, what are your views on the Russia-Ukraine thing? Do you think that it is a scam? Good question. Very good question. Um, my thoughts on it is it's um, World War III, like World War II and World War I, they needed theaters of operation, which is kind of funny when you think about it. Um, war is a theater, a very bloody, very horrible theater. But what they're going to do, I believe, is they're going to stage some kind of, of event in the future um, I don't know what that's going to be, but they're going to basically use the Ukraine. Right now, I think they're getting a lot of people pushed out of it, but they'll use the Ukraine and possibly Taiwan and maybe Venezuela as theaters of operation, um, where they'll actually have, they'll send soldiers over there to get slaughtered, is what I think is the whole thing. Okay. How can a body speak to the soul? How can a body speak without the breath of life? Um, it's not speaking as in audible necessarily. It's just it can, you know, your soul and your spirit, the, the, there's an internal speaking there. Again, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual psalms. Um, the Bible says to do it. So... And you'll hear the still small voice sometime in your soul, you know, spirit. I can't explain it perfectly. It's one of those things that you, you know, the Bible teaches about it. So, so do I. Um, <clears throat> not trying to start a big discussion about this, but what do you, did you think about the name Joshua, Jehoshua, Jeshua, and Jesus all being the same name and same and meaning? Um, yeah, I don't, I'm not really an expert in the Hebrew or anything else, but I've heard it. It's sort of a, you know, root word there that's very similar and things like that. Like, again, I, I don't really know a whole lot of the big deal there. Um, question, what are your views on watching professional sports? I think it's a waste of time. Terrible waste of time, much like video games. Um, question, do you think Putin is Christian against the Catholic Church or another pop puppet? Uh, obviously another puppet. He's one of the young leaders that was trained by the World Economic Forum. Military intelligence guy. He does what he's told. Um, he plays the part of a tough guy and whatever else, but he's a just another little servant of the Pope. So, one final question. What's your views on Gematria? The um, thing of handwriting and you can tell different personalities with, by the way that they write and whatever else. Eh, uh, I'd stay away from that stuff. I was, you know, I've studied it and whatever else, and it just, eh, no.
Um, okay, one final question. <laughs> Question, I signed up to be a member on your ministry website. How long does it take to get approved, brother? I will do it today. Um, I get behind sometimes on the thing of going into my website and whatever else. And uh, something, that, if I could request prayer on this, um, I'm really wanting to have a different website. Same name, maybe a little bit shortened, different you know, things that you can type in, kjvm.com or something like that or something else because King James video ministries.com makes for really long bumper stickers. Um, but I'm really praying about the thing of, I would like to get a more professional website, one that's more user user friendly and I'm willing to pay money for that. So that's a big prayer request of mine right now. If people could pray about that. Um, you know, I'd really like to find some people that could make a professional, much more professional website. So, all right, that's going to be it. Um, brethren, remember what the Bible says. Let me give you the scripture here to, to, to part here from this whole thing. Um, Colossians chapter 2, verse 8. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Right. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. All the fullness of the Godhead. There's no part that's missing. All right. There's no person besides Jesus Christ. Please understand that. Jesus Christ is God. Period. That includes the Father and the Holy Ghost. He's God. Well, I have these questions and I have this thing here. Would we agree to... If you're talking philosophically, then you're over here on this side. You're not with the Bible anymore, and I'm not going to support that. I'm not going to say, you know, whatever else. Um, so um, it's about all I can say about that. So um, and one other thing that I want to say as well, um, and that is the thing about this office here. I made the announcement when we first bought this place actually we're standing right over there in this very room before i had my books in here and everything else and i said that i was eventually going to make this you know have an email address and people could contact it and they could come here and whatever else i have not forgotten about that the problem is um i can't just have this place open to anybody because we do not have running water here right um you say, well, you don't have running water? No, because number one, it's fluoridated town water that I'd have to pay for. And if I have it in my pipes, it's corroded all kinds of stuff here, which I didn't know about when I first bought it. Um, literally, the septic system was being, I think they were in the backyard digging it up. There's a big hole. They have an old backhoe out here. It's broken down. I don't even know if the thing runs. Um, it's in really rough shape. And the pipes like the big sewage pipes that go down into the septic tank, they're corroded. And if you would put a lot of water down through, they probably would burst. So there's a reason I got the place for so cheap. But if I would have water in the pipes, um, I would actually have to have heat in here. I'd have to be paying for the, you know, the home heating oil, which is red diesel, basically. I would have to pay for that. So it would cost, you know, a lot of money to just heat this place to have running water here in the winter time. And I'm just not going to do that. Um, it's, it would not be cost effective. So, you know, we have composting toilets here and then we have, you know, jugs with spring water. We basically do the off grid thing here um, and battery powered shower and whatever else. Uh, so, I mean, we have wiring issues right now in this place. The wiring is bad. If I'm in here working and my wife tries to work in the room over here and she turns on a computer there and I have a computer on here and I turn on a heater or she turns on a heater or a fan, it uh, blows the circuit breaker. My wife's office where she was at, she turned the light on the one time and, and wires spark like crazy. It's the old um, ceramic post with the wire wrapped around it, you know, going from, you know, uh, floor joist to floor joist. Uh, so 
my original plans and thinking of having people coming and visiting with us here, well, you know, if you don't have to go to the bathroom, I guess it wouldn't be, you know, too bad or something, but I can't just have people come and when we don't have a bathroom, we don't have running water. I mean, we're familiar with it because we're off grid. We live off grid, but um, so I feel stupid about it, but it's just kind of a thing of, you know, what we wanted, what we wanted a place where we could be, come online and do what I'm doing right now, make videos here, do our computer work, but we don't live here. So um, as we expand the ministry, there are our future plans and whatever else. Um, so I don't know. Uh, it's kind of funny. Just share this. Tonight, there's a town meeting um, over at the fire hall. And uh, they're discussing there's an old historic Baptist church right across the road diagonal from where we're at. And uh, it was actually being used as the library. And now it's it's has a bunch of repair issues and whatever else. So they're not sure if they're going to tear it down or try to sell it, and whatever. And I was laughing. I said to my wife, I said, you know, if they sell it, we should try to buy it. <laughs> you know, then we'd have an actual Baptist church building. And, uh, you know, so then I could, you know, I could start my cult there and, and people could come and worship me and on everything else. And we could have, uh, you know, favorite pastor, pastor appreciation Sunday and everything else. You know, so we're not buying it. I'm just being sarcastic, but I, I just thought that was funny. A Baptist church, you know, we came in here and put up our banners and things. And all of a sudden the library is not over there anymore. It's been there for many years. And uh, they had to move down to um, the Lumberman's Museum and a couple blocks down that way and uh, on a side street. So just thought that was kind of funny but um that's going to be it for this video uh, i have some stuff planned for the upcoming weekend in terms of sermons don't know if i'm going to get this sermon notes done but i already have my ideas written down different people have uh given me some ideas and i've got some other ideas too but i need to get the studies done and whatever so um thank you to everybody out there for your prayers and your support and um so I think that's going to be it. But um, I don't have anything in common with this uh, Caleb Wilson guy. If you're a hardcore Trinitarian and you're trying to fit all those man-made terms of essence and all the other stuff into the Bible, then you don't, it's not been revealed to God from, you know, through his word. That's a lie. And you need to repent of that. That is going to be it. And we will see you in the next video.